We're gonna go. Okay, you guys, <laughs> welcome to another episode of Unnamed and Untamed. I'm here with Meredith and Sonia, and we were just getting into all the good talk, so we decided to go ahead and start our intro for today's topic now. Yeah, sorry guys, we we generally do this, like we get on and then we just start talking and we talk for like 20 minutes, like, oh shit, we probably should record our episode now. So <laughs> yeah, we, so we're, we're, we're learning, we're getting it, we're getting it. Okay, we're, we're so learning. we left off with Sonia, your update yeah. on- yeah. So my, bo- my boob update, so yeah. Um, yeah, okay, so I, I did my due diligence on this and um, I got quoted $20,000 from a doctor here and 24 from another doctor here, which is $24,000, which is ridiculous. And I don't really, I mean, I don't like them. I mean, I don't really care that much about my boobs. I know that's kind of weird, but like, but I would just wait until it becomes a health issue because I don't know, but so um, I did research some really great doctors in Florida. So if you guys are looking for a breast dog doc in Florida, it's great. I have some hit me up. And so like the difference is, is so many people are like, oh, this is an og doctor, like an augmentation, meaning throw in some tits underneath, like some, some smaller tits. I feel like any doctor can do that and do it pretty well. Yeah. When it comes to a lift and um, a revision, and you're talking about scars around your areola, down your boob, across you want to make sure that that surgeon is a fucking artist. And I have seen some amazing boob jobs with that same doctor doing terrible lifts. Lifts is its own art. Um, And because of the way the implant is, I have to have a full, uh, I have to go, they have to go back in and like lift and move some stuff around, clean a pocket out. So anyways, if you guys need a doctor, let me know. I also interviewed a bunch of doctors from Guadalajara. So Guadalajara, there's good plastic surgeons everywhere. And everyone's like, oh my God, going to Mexico is like so sketchy. Well, if I was from Mexico and I told you I'm going home because it's less expensive, now you wouldn't judge me. You see how that's such a fucking thing. Fact, fact, Yeah. yeah. And I'm not going to Cuba, which is the motherland for me. And because yeah. I don't, I would rather go to Mexico and Guadalajara than go to Cuba and get plastic surgery. Where for sure. Yeah. So um, I am, so, but, so I actually, and it, and it was the same procedure was $4,800. And I was like, awesome. With a really, really, really well-known famous doctor down there. He's amazing. So again, if you need an option, let me know. But then I actually was able to get in with um, the surgeon that I went with here and he was out of town. And I was like, I don't know if I was like happy. And I looked at my before and after pictures and I was like, dude, my teeth were rocking. And every single plastic surgeon that I've talked to has said, this has nothing to do with your doctor. This is a 5%. Yeah. Anyways. I got the same warning. Yeah. Yeah, you're just one of the 5%. And actually I've done a little research. No one is fucking surprised. And there are different gut microbiome changes that can happen that can create these issues. And I was sending them to Sarah and Meredith. And so it's very well possible that with this different, the back-to-back SIBOs that I had and the gut issues that I had and the stress on my body, that my body just wanted to kind of fight this implant more than the other one. So that's something. So they actually opened up a case with my implant company. They're replacing the implants for free. So I'm getting my, um, I'm going to be able to stay here and do it. It's, it's going to be still pretty expensive, but it's only 2000 more than going to Florida. And for me having my doctor here, 15 minutes away, being able to be with my family, no one has to travel, all that kind of stuff is worth $2,000 to me. So that's so cool. Your new boom is coming like, December. Yeah. 2021. So Ooh, and we're going to do an episode just in case anyone's wondering, we're actually going to do a couple of episodes all about boobs. getting boobs, having boobs, risk of boobs, yeah. after boobs. Cause she's having to have her redone. Honestly, for myself, I'm getting to that point. Like, I'm not going to say that they, they don't age like a fine wine. Like, you know, you do need to have a revision at some point. Um, you know, some are fine, but yeah. So we're going to do- And now they do all different things. Like now they do, if you go above a certain CC, they put a, a bra- um, The bra uh, thing technique. Right? bra in there. And I'm yeah. like, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. So then you don't have to get a lift because think about it. The heavier it is, the far harder it's going to fall. Gravity. <laughs> yeah. 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 Gravity. So, and then guys, like, 
yeah, we'll do a whole episode, but like which implant you want, like, do you want it wider or projecting or do you want an upper pole or lower pole or like, like the European look there? I don't know if you're like, okay, this is how old I am, but like they were having ones that were like more of like this natural, like where they actually yes. look like they were not, not sagging. I don't mean sagging, yes. but sagging. No, it's, is- it's the same it's exact. And I do not quite care for that because it nope. looks, it, it doesn't look, it looks really natural at first, yeah. but it, it you would rather start higher and drop lower. You know what I mean? Let's go for a hundred and we'll settle with 90. But that's like what I'm learning too, is like, I got the ones that are like the most natural feeling. However, they're like, not as like what they call cohesive. They're more like soft. So they fall more natural, which is like a teardrop. Yeah. 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 They're nice. I'll send you guys a picture. I send you guys a picture. Yeah. 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 Okay. Your DMs. It's funny, like when you were when uh we were sending the Instagram pictures, I was like, it's like all of a sudden, like you, you're like, oh fuck, I want to go in now and get them redone again. Like I'm like, yeah, it you're such a girl. You're like, oh. I know for sure. Wait till you can come to the US. Or I don't know how much it would be up there, actually. It might be cheaper. Who knows at this point? My God, they might have to check all our passports and all that to even yeah. get it. Meredith, how's it going up there? Seasons are a changing. You're, yeah, you're so, I'm, let me paint this picture really quick. So Meredith is in a full sweater and a hoodie or a, a sweater, a classic top bun, and she gets on and she's got a scarf wrapped around her whole neck up into her face. Like you can just see her lips. <laughs> it's a look. It's, this and is now is in a tank top and this yeah. and it's like bright as fuck inside her house. <laughs> With, it's a look and this is going to be the look from pretty much now until like next I don't know like April May <laughs> something like that things are good I actually I'm not a share but I'm trying to be better about this so myself I decided to do something because when I was induced into menopause for those who don't know I was induced in surgical menopause a year ago I, and I had adrenal fatigue. I noticed about nine months after, no shocker to the girls here, I had some hair loss. And for me, I have a thick ass, like head of hair, never an issue in my family. Balding is not an issue. We always like, I was the one who had to like, you know, get the extra thick, you know, rubber bands. Yeah. So yeah. I, I noticed some hair loss happening and that obviously freaks us out, but I was like, okay, we're just to make sure lab works good thyroid is good all the things are good so i have all my shit tucked in so let me just caveat that like if you have hair loss get to the root of the issue all those are tucked in anyway i decided to do a procedure where they draw your blood and they do take your platelets and they inject your platelets around your scalp and is it called plasma yes Yes. Something along those lines. I yeah. probably should have the name. Like that would be helpful to the listeners. I can't help you on that. Cause this is who I am. Okay. Um, basically I just, I saw it and I was like, yes, that is what I need. Yes. Now. So anyway, I went and had that done for the first time yesterday. Uh, not going to play with you kids. Um, that's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of little needles. That's a lot of needles. Say, did it hurt? Yeah. Like it's like, so just imagine like, like thumbtacks, like being stabbed. So if you ever have done an insulin syringe, it'd be like an insulin syringe. Like yeah. it's like Botox needle, like just thousands, 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 like uh, all around the top of your do head. Do they numb like, you? No, you can't, you can't get any numbing. So it was interesting. I did it. I'm really glad I did it. I will be doing it for the next, um, I think five months. So once yeah. every three to five weeks is when you go. And this is what like hair growth is. So like if anyone starts to lose your hair, you have to look at what's happened in the last, like basically six months to a year. Yeah. And so that is how it will regrow. So in basically six months from now, I should start to see like some fine hairs kind of growing again. So we will see. I'm excited. It was a thing. It was the first thing I've ever like, okay, Mary, you're doing this a gift to you. Yeah. So that's my big news for the week. I love that. That's the, so that's, you can, okay. You can also get it all done in Mexico too. So if you live close to Mexico, they do all that. But the thing is, is you have to go back. It's not like, so stem cells are really big there too. My dad goes there for stem cells. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So this is every, the window of happiness is like every three to five weeks. So I'm going to be going like every four to three weeks. And then I basically have already booked like from now until like right before Christmas. So I was like, I'm not yeah. going to fuck around. Like I want these appointments booked and like, like, let's just do yeah. it. So come like February, 
we should see some issue. But like, if anyone looks at me, like you would not see it, but I'm like, this is where I'm at. I'm like, I don't want to have bald spots by the time I'm in my forties. Like that's just not cool for me. Not, not happening. So all about the prevention. Yeah. Preventative. Like it's- Go ahead, Sarah. Preventative measures. Yeah, for sure. I feel like as women, hair and hair and boobs are kind of like our things that make us feminine. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. if a guy starts to lose his hair, I mean, not, not meaning that was a fucked up comment, not meaning that big boobs or, or whatever, but it's like yeah. our boobs in general, when our boobs in general change, it's like, it just feels different. It's the thing that like, is our, it's kind of like the things that set us apart, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like hair loss, like for a guy, when he loses his hair, I feel like I have nothing again, like for females who like shave their head and want to go, but like, that is cool. Like rock it on just for me. I don't want to have like this huge, massive, yeah. you know, like entire like spot. So well, I was, like, like you, know you said, like your genetics is to have like a thick head of hair. Like, yeah, exactly. You know? So when that happened, I was like, you know what, like what's wrong with just get, using your own platelets. They don't put it like, literally that is all it is. They take your blood, they spin it. They pull your own platelets. Nothing else is put in it. So completely mm-hmm. it is you being injected to you. So kind of like that vampire facial, never had it, but I've seen it Yeah, um, similar to that. So let you, let you guys know on that. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Keep us posted. Cause I mean, totally. I'm in the market too. So, I mean, well, I think I would start, I would start Botox when I'm like 30 for like preventative. Yeah. That's the best time to do it. Yeah. I started like a year ago as prevent. Okay. So this is funny because I just got it done. So, you know, that lovely forehead vein that we all have, like, yeah. Okay. So I have one, you know, and you can't really see it because I get Botox. Right. But I just got Botox the other day and I'm on so many omegas right now. My gut healing protocol, it, which sends your blood. And she's like, uh, you're going to bruise. So I have this like awesome, like, Botox. I I do see it. Yeah. But it's, I love Botox. It's beautiful. Beautiful yeah thing. so that's on the wish list yeah, yeah. I think it's a, it's a good preventative thing well actually when I've talked to so the girl I was with last night she does Botox on people and so she was telling me so she's an RN and she was telling me you know when it comes to doing a lot of these things like the best time to do it is prevention because yeah. once you have those fine lines and things she said you have them she's like I can't make them go away I can make them fade and she said, and we can prevent the rest. She said, but we're then, you know, dealing with, you know, rest- restoration versus prevention, which with anything, restoration is the hardest thing, right? Yeah. Well, and that, I mean, that kind of maybe brings us to our topic today a little bit, but like I started getting facials last year when I was going off the pill. Like when I stopped going, when I stopped taking the pill, I also started doing facials because I was worried about like my skin rebounding. Yeah. So sure. like this extra like precautions like like I wash my face like three times a day like the first month just to like make sure you know um and I had a pretty pretty smooth transition but like again like I feel like that was a big big part of it like these little things that like people don't think about yeah oh that's really smart I would never like actually that's not something I would ever have thought about recommending somebody is to get on the facial part but you're totally right like skincare Yeah. yeah or at least just like don't touch your face kind of thing yeah yeah if you like really put that in the back of your head you start realizing how many how much you're just like oh 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 I am the worst I am the worst yeah love it Sarah how's your week been what's new with you boo it's been good I have so I'm going on about well so I'm still in this gut protocol still not moving on to the next phase but we do a podcast on all of our gut stuff gut stuff right we should so I do have a bachelorette party this weekend um it's just me Nicole and Chelsea because um Nicole's other bridesmaid unfortunately isn't able to come but it'll be low-key I mean we're already low-key and then but well I'll show you guys real quick the viewers won't be able to see but this is my fun guy (gasps) oh my god (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so this will come out in a few weeks yes. it's a blow up of the groom so I love it that yeah. is awesome oh my god I need a link to order that and I'll tell because you guys offline why Etsy is amazing for like, oh okay cool and like Etsy. there's like all these like different like penis cookie cutters like there's all this random stuff on Etsy but anyway so we got that this weekend in, in West Palm so that'll be fun um and then Olympia is next weekend, which I'm going to try to go to. Oh, nice. But again, 
Yeah, what? Uh, so that's that's nice. Oh, nice. That's so nice. Nice. Great. I thought Sarah was gonna fight Meredith for a second. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so got that. Um, I don't know, like I'll, it's like a lot of social things, and I'm like, I'm an extrovert, but I'm also like, who? Like, okay, gotta gear up for this. So are you do you know if you're gonna go to Olympia or not? I'm not, I'm going, but I, it's only an hour from me. So like, I don't know what the plan of attack is, but yeah, I'm going to see people and hang yeah. out. Yeah. At like least like Danielle's okay. competing there. And I think it starts at like, I want to say eight o'clock Florida time for bikini. And so I'm like, okay, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm like up at five, you know, like, oh, man. Yeah. Do they yeah. for, um, for the, amateurs. Yeah. Yeah. Are they doing like the, um, uh like the I said gazebos Jesus Christ um expo thank you expo are they doing yeah expo? yeah they're doing the expo so like that's what I was thinking of doing with some other people that'll be down there um Saturday morning just yeah. because, like finals I mean it's like 200 something dollars for a ticket and like we love bodybuilding and fitness but like that's also our job so yeah. like sitting there for like hours and hours and hours is like I rather like pay for a live stream and watch it with friends I was just gonna say live stream is like life-changing like it's yeah. so like I kind of you know what it felt like when I said so I, I live streamed um not Jason's this past show he did but the I think it was last year's and it felt like I was watching a football game like it was like yeah. so yeah. cool so it was like always on in the house and like I'd come up I'd work and I'd go downstairs and it's almost like you're like you're walking by the tv I'm acting this out just so everybody the viewers can't see we need a youtube be the way I know um, I was like walking by the tv and you're like you know caught by the whatever the football but this time it was the um the not the olympia but yeah, yeah. one of the I think New York pro or something like that we did yeah, that with the olympia, olympia last year and then the gym that I go to shout out body shop fitness um they uh have net tvs in there and they have shows playing all the time now just That's they're awesome. live streaming all of it so anytime we go in there there's like a sh they're doing it or doing replays and stuff like that which is really cool it's motivating as fuck dude i was gonna say that oh, yeah. is a really great idea because i mean fuck that would be motivating like yeah. that'd be like the best like i mean even cardio session you'd be there like <laughs> yeah yeah so let's talk birth control yes let's do it where do we want to start so i know that we like we cover different stuff we covered we, we covered we covered our cycle we covered um some different things with vince and then we wanted to kind of bring it back home for you guys for application because not everyone can afford a coach and people just want i want to know like where can they start or what things can they do and there can be a lot of kind of like back and forth information out there and just know that we are three people with three opinions and three ways of doing things and they're not necessarily all going to be the same but we know that we've had success with clients using these methods before and we're hoping that if it is something that you want to do transitioning off hormonal birth control that some of these tips can help you obviously if you're looking at working with somebody more hand in hand all of us are accepting clients right i'm pretty sure are you guys still yeah. Yeah, yes. all yes. of our coaching clients right now. So if you wanted to work with a coach during this process, obviously that's an option. But I think one of the biggest things that gets missed in coming off of birth control that I commonly see here and um, and I have gone through myself is there's no prep to coming off birth control. You don't want to just be like, you know what? Heard it on a podcast. I'm fucking done and throw away your pill. That's the last thing you want to do, especially when you've been on these birth controls for a long period of time. Like one of the biggest things that can happen with birth control, just on a, on a lower level is that your it's like putting a bandaid on or suppressing your natural hormones. A lot of us go on birth control in the beginning because of X it's not, it's, it's, it's not as common that somebody's like, I started birth control very early because I was having sex very early. So it's like half and half. A lot of times people are starting birth control early because of hormonal dysfunction, PCOS-like symptoms, cystic acne, stuff like that. Now there are still people that do that. But if you have started because of those reasons, don't think that you're not going to now not have to deal with those issues underlying. Yeah. And sometimes those can actually be pots that are cooking and you didn't see the water boiling because it's a pressure cooker 
And then we, if we just take that lid off that pressure cooker, steam's going to come up. So what we want to do is we want to slowly start to push a little button on the Instant Pot, let the steam come off before we take the top off. And yeah. one of the, go ahead. I just wanted to kind of dive in and say like real quick, like just like everyone has a reason to go on the pill and yes. like everyone has a reason for choosing their form of birth control, everyone is going to have a reason to get off and everyone's going to have a slightly different approach to getting off again, depending on why you went on it and how long you've been on it. Yeah. And what symptoms you're having. I always like a really great analogy that my friend, Travis, Travis, Zipper, um, gave me was that, you know, it's like walking into a bathroom and this is for so many things, liver, gut, anything, but we're going to bring it into hormonal birth control is walking into a bathroom and the floor is completely flooded and the water is running and the drain is clogged. You have to unclog the drain. You have to turn the water off, right? It's kind of like, if you were to just see that and you're like, I'm going to grab a mop and I'm going to start mopping up. It's like, well, that's not going to do anything. You have to actually turn the water off. You have to unclog the drain then you have to mop up the water that's on the floor or else you're not going to see success. And so I guess we can start kind of with the prep phase. And I don't know who, whichever one of you kind of wants to kick it off of, you know, what exactly we're preparing the body for um, as far as like, you know, liver detoxification, that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, I'll go. Um, so I know for, this is going to look a little bit different depending on if you have a coach or you don't have a coach. And I know from my clients, typically a walk off is really simple because whether they realize it or not, I already have them set up. Um, and what I mean by that is no matter how long someone's on birth control, I don't care if you've been on it just, you know, a couple of months, um, that adaption has happened. It has affected your body, your brain, right? Cause this is all starting at the brain level. Um, and I know for myself, it's making sure I'm going to go, I'm going to go really basic wrong here and then work it up. Because for me, if we don't have the basics, I can't give you supplements. That's mm -hmm. just how I coach. Yeah. You yes. know, not every coach is that way. A lot of coaches, as soon as you start with them um, and again, it depends, but this is my thing. So for, for first is quality of nutrients, making sure we're sleeping, making sure we're hydrating, understanding that sleep has, we're not going to get into all the things. We'll do a podcast on that affects all the systems of the body that is going to be, you know, reparative for like all the things it's going to be that waste system, blah, hydration. We want to make sure here again, we're hydrating the body. That's going to affect our liver detoxification pathways, all the things, blah, Nutri nutrition, same thing. So we're going to get those, make sure we're getting B vitamins from nutrition, all the things, blah. Once we have consistency that way, that's when I'm going to say, okay, what do they need? extra. That's when I'll say, Hey, listen, maybe we need a B complex. Maybe we need some extra zinc. Maybe we, I'm going to say every, all my clients know I'm just a magnesium gly glycinate whore or, you know, therinate depending. Um, so you're going to be on magnesium. Congratulations. Um, magnesium you know, at night and then going into again, what they may need for supporting liver pathways, not saying everyone needs a detox, Yes. And supporting liver and a detox juice cleanse, very different. Most juice cleanses, they're going to say just, you know, juice, you know, some veggies and fruits, no, whatever, and just drink this to detox for your body. Your body needs fat. Okay. So number one, a juice cleanse, isn't going to supply that you're, you're going to be missing the boat. So again, supporting your body to do what it needs to do by itself. So that may look like maybe for you having some milk thistle. It may not. It may be looking like having an all-in-one supplement. People know I, I like to use Metapure. That may be great for that person. But for me, supporting liver, whether it's with a tease, like dandelion tea, um, there's actually another one I wanted to tell you guys. It's by the same company. Really good. It has like stingy nettle in it. It has a little bit of licorice in, which you have to be careful with, but it's like a really small dose. Yeah. Like this little, it's like a combo. I'll send it to you guys. It's really good. So yeah, I love having the yeah. as an option for clients. And again, like you want to get the, uh, it's the D, it's the D glaricinized. Yeah. DGL. 
DGL, degliricinated or something. It's fucking a long word and it's confusing. But if it looks DGL long and confusing, it's right. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, it's a different type of licorice. So you're not having issues with high blood pressure, but that can be super beneficial for just preparing, yeah. like she said, preparing the body, smoothing the gut out, like so digestive enzymes, so many different factors there. I, I want to dive in and, and Meredith, I'll just ask you and have you break it down since you're already here. Can you explain for people the importance of liver detoxification as far as the CYP enzyme converting into different types of estrogen and why those different types of estrogen are good or bad? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I would say maybe just wind it back real quick and explain a little bit like why we need to support these systems when yeah. coming off birth control. Like yeah. HPA axis, liver. Yeah. So the body, I'll, I'll kind of start, I'll, then I'll let you kind of go guys to go too. So when it comes to being put on birth control, understand that the body is now adapted and downregulated because you're using as, as this may sound harsh, it is what it is. Take it in. You are using an exogenous steroid. You are using steroids. If you are using birth control, cause that is what, you know, estrogen, progesterone, all these things, they are steroid hormones. Um, and your body is going to downregulate for that. Um, when you are coming off, now understand when it down regulates, a couple things can happen. And this is where we just don't know. And so whenever someone's going to say, I'm coming off birth control, I tell them one of three things is going to happen. Either one, they're going to come off. Nothing is going to happen. Everything's going to stay down regulated. The second thing that would happen is everything is going to happen. And it's going to be like, literally you're standing in fire going, I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. And everything's on fire around you. Everything's going to go turn on like crazy. The third thing that's going to happen is everything turns on like a beautiful fucking butterfly. You feel great. You have a consistent period. That's not always the case. And so yeah. that is what you have to understand going back to those episodes with like what we did um, as far as the period and talking with events is when you take birth control, like say for acne, it doesn't mean your body is not going to be, you know, producing that sebum anymore in fact you can come off the birth control and then it's like holy shit man and then you have acne coming off of acne yes. off of acne and that's no coach and i just i want to say this no coach can predict that no. we can gather information and this is why we always say so what even on labs we won't know yeah. even on labs we won't know even knowing the exact type of birth control and when you started we won't know because yeah. everyone's body it's like for example, like getting a vaccine, not even just the, the COVID vaccine, any vaccine. Some people have no symptoms. Some people are fucking rocked. And really, you just don't know. It's like hit or miss. Same thing with getting COVID. Some people yeah. get symptoms. Yeah. Some people pass away. Some people don't feel anything at all. So again, you never know what's going to happen underneath there. And with the prep phase and then supporting your body in that transition, the goal is that we are the way it was explained to me by my mentor. And then when I was going through this personally was we're putting the boxing gloves on your body. Like your HPA access has been turned off. Cause remember birth control does not regulate your cycle. It turns it off basically. Yeah. Um, so we're putting the boxing gloves on your body so that when you go into the ring, when we pull that pill out and your body's left on its own to, you know, get back up to speed again, yes. Oh, you good. already have those gloves on and you're ready to kind of like fight the good fight. Um, go ahead. Another go. thing to think about too, is like our period is a representation of about three months before. Yeah. So your diet, your sleep schedule, your stress, like Sarah was saying, anything going on with your HPA, which is going to be your adrenals, your gut dysfunction, every, your toxicity level, everything going on three months prior is what you're going to experience. So yeah. if you can prep the body and be in this like beautiful homeostasis, like Sarah just like said beautifully, like it's putting the boxing gloves on that way. When you come off, you're more likely to experience those, you know, two or three ones that you already prepped for coming down the line. Yeah. And again, it may not work that way. Yeah. A couple, I guess one thing I also just say here and then I'll, I'll pass the baton is when coming off birth control, number one is making that decision and discussing on why and understanding that you are okay with the unknown, which is scary. Um, the second thing that I would say in coming off birth control is make sure you have the basics. Like I, I literally harp on those foundations, the free shit, have those tucked in, like you're tucking in your bed, yeah. then make sure on top of that, 
you're supporting. There is no sense that you're going to go out and buy all these supplements and do all the things if you aren't doing the other stuff. And then I will say this too. I suggest that you get lab work done before you come off birth control. That is your baseline. People are like, oh, it's not accurate. Oh, oh, honey, it's accurate because that is, that is an indication of where you are now. Also talk to your coach. They should be asking about, Hey, how is your period before? If you remember, how is your period before you were on birth control? That's just something to tuck in the back of your head. It doesn't indicate anything like, however, it could get lab work before you come off birth control, have your system supported. And this is just one more thing I'll just say, and then I'll, I'll let you guys, um, I do not start supporting up regulation of the HPA access. People are like, oh, my coach is, you know, and again, I, I love you new ethics products. So you might've heard of jumpstart all these things. I do not suggest for my clients, every case is different, but I do not personally like to kickstart anybody's HPA because what if you're one of those hyper responders and you pull your birth control and we put you on boron to support testosterone? We put you on you know, all these yeah. things to kickstart your access. Kickstart I'm gonna some PCOS. Start PCOS. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And and you guys make sure you have a backup form of birth control. Like make sure you know yes. what you're doing in terms of contraception. If you've been relying on the pill, the the, whatever it is, the implant, um, for, for contraception. Like, I feel like that's yeah, a that's law, a but point. it's, it's nice. best. Yeah. Because some women, like we were saying before, like some women respond like beautifully and they're the butterfly and like, it's great. And they're fertile two weeks later. So yes. Another thing not prepared for that. You're not prepared for that. So yeah. wrap it up, have a backup, understand, and maybe even like start really researching basal thermometer or the cup or whatever you're going to do, like really get on board, have that conversation. Another thing that I want to bring up is when it comes to detoxification, and this is any kind of detoxification, if you're constipated, you're not going to eliminate bottom line. So if you are not having regular, healthy, daily bowel movements, meaning not rocks and pebbles, not super soft stool, but like regular daily bowel movements one to three times a day, then you are not properly eliminating waste from your body. So we're going to eliminate toxins from our body in general through urine, through feces, and through sweat. So I always say to make sure as we're prepping the body that we have to have digestion in a really good place and motility, meaning things moving through your body, because if we're not having that, the body is not going to flush out those extra toxins that are recirculating the high uh, estrogens that can come back in. We talked about, you know, that, 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 you know, excess estrogens can create issues. We talk about estrogen dominance all the time. Estrogen has a beautiful place in the body and the metabolism. And what happens is if we're recirculating the, the, there's more good than bad normally. But what happens is that little bit of bad that gets thrown back in the mix makes a huge difference. It's like if we had a huge tub of bath water and I put, you know, and that's all the good estrogen in our body. And then I put two drops of food dye in there. It's going to change the whole water. So imagine if like the, the, you know, we have like the different types of estrogen. Imagine if like the, there's, there's going to be three. Imagine if the bad types of estrogen were recirculating back in your body and not coming out. Those are the ones that are going to create some of those like terrible PMS symptoms where our boobs are just super heavy, um, super emotional. We're holding a ton of water. Um, and that's going to be the 4-OH and the 16-OH pathways. If you haven't done a Dutch, you're probably not going to like understand this, but supporting with both having a healthy gut microbiome so you can flush this out, then things like carciferous vegetables, broccoli sprouts, things that are going to actually help dim, take that and push that into your colon so you can then go to the bathroom and get rid of it. Um, yeah. Another thing is drinking a shit ton of water. Like make sure you're on top of your water. Make sure you're on top of your salt, your magnesium. Notice how she said <laughs> this is like one common mistake I see is people think all magnesiums are created equal and yeah. they end up shitting themselves for days trying to <laughs> adapt to their magnesium protocols. So yeah. 
Yeah. Make sure you're doing glyconate on that. And then make sure you're getting some sweat in. Make sure you're either using, I like to say like infrared sauna or sauna or getting, you know, it, it, you know, doing some cardio, like where you're sweating, but you're not taxing your body. These are all good, also good ways to detoxify your body without throwing a bunch of supplements at it. Yeah. It's really like, it doesn't necessarily need to be crazy fancy. Um, I think like you know, in the pre preparatory phase, like that's where you're really like, again, looking at your lab work. Do we need to support liver? Do we need to, or I'm sorry, do we need to support thyroid? Like, what do we need to do again, to kind of lifestyle wise to put those boxing gloves on your body. And then when you're, you like, I would pick a date, like I would have like your pill pack or whatever it is and be like, okay, at the end of this pill pack, that's when I'm starting. So it's, let's say it's October 31st, you know? So starting like October, like maybe that's when you start doubling down, like on, you know, supporting that liver. And then when you go off the pill, that's where like what Sonia was just going over, like kind of ramp those things up. Um, again, not going nuts. Cause we want to keep stress low here, but like Epsom salt baths, sauna, water, yeah. sweat, like dandelion tea, like that's all very doable things. Yeah, a hundred percent. I normally, I know for my clients, I normally, we start having conversations and that way, like I said, they're pretty much prepped without them even knowing they're prepped just because yeah. I know that everything's tucked in. I like everything to be prepped and ready to go for at least two to three months because of how that maturation cycle works. And then, like I said, once I have someone get labs and then they're ready to come off just be careful with like uh, Sonia was saying, like with like the dims and things like that, because again, you don't know who you are. And unfortunately the most majority of my clientele is either the nothing happens or everything and the fire happens. Mm -hmm. And for the nothing that happens again, dim doesn't just, we're not just speeding up as far as estrogen detoxification there. Understanding that, you know, looking at a Dutch, we get a lot of information, but then we have to make educated choices. And so if somebody, for example, is, you know, say they are really low on estrogen, but they are, you know, preferencing a little bit more of like the 4-OH or 16-OH pathway, you need to take in other information before you decide if now is the time for the DIM, because that DIM will speed up other things. It's not just speeding up estrogen. So this is why I say, I do prefer testing and not guessing and being very conservative. And then once you do come off birth control, again, that first, we start taking basal morning temperatures, which, which we talked about on previous podcasts. We start taking that as information. It's just information. There is no good. There is no bad. At this point, I tell clients, we're just going to keep trucking and see, see what happens. See how you feel, how you respond. The, I'll say the first period it's, it is what it is. I don't care if it's one day. I don't care if it's, you know, if we're, it's 14 days long, great. We're going to keep going. We're going to just going to keep going. I do not suggest getting lab work until again, around like that 10 week. But here again, I want to don't marry these numbers because for me, for my clients, I like to see three cycle trends because again, now I want to get lab work hypothetically in their, you know, when, after they have ovulated, hoping that they yeah. are, and that's going to take those first three cycles to figure out, are they, when is this? Like if you have a, a 21 day cycle, but then the second cycle is 45 days. Well, guess what? Let's not get lab work yet. Let's just start supporting what we see. And that may be like, Hey, maybe some chase berry is, is okay. Maybe you know, or Vitex or whatever it is again, but this is, you know, I do suggest working with a coach if you're going to do this, because there's just so many things to look at. And I think I see so much like on Instagram of coaches doing all the things. And I'm just like, number one, like if you start yeah. some stuff too soon, I mean, you could technically suppress or access again. Like, yeah, yeah. the things I, I think the things that, that, you can work on in the beginning as far as a supplement side of things to play it safe is mitigating side effects, yeah. meaning um, like magnesium, calcium, D. omegas. Yeah. E. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Vitamin E, vitamin B, like those very simple things that aren't going to create issues down the line. Because again, 
and this is like just an example. I have a client and she's like, I have super high cortisol and I'm estrogen dominant. And that's what my lab said. And I was like, cool, great. And I like, I was like, I'm going to wait until we get our new results back before, but I had, I already wrote everything ready to go thinking exactly what she told me. And like, based on some stuff that this is what it was going to be. And I held on to that little protocol and she gave me her Dutch and she was flatline on cortisol. <laughs> yeah. three. She had tanked estrogen and her progesterone was fine. Yeah. And so I was like, yeah, this is, but, but she had taken a bunch of dim and she was on a ton of cordies and phosphatidyl serline. So yeah. what happened is someone guessed and didn't test and said, you sound like you have estrogen dominant. You should take dim. And then what you should also do is suppress your cortisol. And she's now in phase three and we have no estrogen. Yeah. And so um, and then her progesterone was fine. And then the person she was working with told her to come off of her progesterone um, and onto Vitex, which at her age, it's like, it's just crazy. We, we really have to be sure when we're working with clients. And I know as health coaches, it can be like, I've seen the same thing over and over. I know what the labs are going to say, but it's that one person that you just guessed and you didn't test and you can actually set yourself back. I've done that with clients in SIBO yeah. in the beginning as a new coach. And I was like, I'm sure that it's just, we just do this and I'll give them some, you know, you know, digestive enzymes and the HCL and like, and that'll be good to go in it even, or an added zinc and magnesium and that zinc and magnesium fed up the beneficial. I was going to say fed them up. Yeah. That's a really common misconception is that everyone should just start on magnesium and zinc as a basic gut healing protocol. And that can actually make things even worse. And, you know, we all make mistakes as coaches and we don't know what's underlying. And there's times I've even seen labs and they've done something and it's not been the best decision, you know, but I think what we can do is we can do our due diligence ahead of time. And what we can say is there's a thousand free things like chewing your food, sitting down to eat, getting sleep, light exposure first thing in the morning. I just did a podcast on this for PCOS, but it's applicable to everyone for everything. You know, it's Blood like sugar regulation, like eating, yes. that's eating, oh my like gosh. don't Do you want to explain people? why that's so important. Yeah. I mean, okay. Talk about the greatest stress of all time is if you're, star- yeah. if you're starving, like that is the original stressor, right? Yeah. So you're fasting or you're not eating regularly, or you're, you're just, you know, insulin is, you know, what it depends on you. Right. But in general, we need to just be like feeding you regularly, not to spike that cortisol. Um, so again, like really back to basics here. And that's why like, to like, I just can't stand like the throwing, whoops, throwing like random, like supplements at someone before we kind of like go through kind of like your, your circle here of like foundational habits. Um, and again, I think I, I hope this episode helps people kind of see that it does depend. Like, why did you go on it? Like, what are you, like, you might be someone you sleep great. Okay, great. we check checked that box. Like you have great sleep quality. Okay. Maybe we need to dial in on another area. Um, and that's what you need, um, to kind of, again, prep your body. Yeah. It's one thing I'll say, I'll go back to something that Sonia said again, so important is I'll again, I'll harp on this. I do always think a coach is really just best. I've had people contact me and say, so-and-so is coming off birth control. What should I do? And I can give you the best and say, I mean, honestly, you need someone to support you to walk it off, um, to, to be best case scenario. Um, but what Sonia was saying about the gut health for me and myself, there's no way I'm touching as far as supporting hormones until gut health is cinched up. I, you know, I have a client now we're working on a gut health protocol. We got labs back. Progesterone is low. Estrogen is not super duper. However, having poor gut health will affect that. And then improving gut health will also benefit that. So we might be able to support less later by again, just handling, like Sarah said, handling the basic foundations first. Like it really comes back down to, I know it's the boring shit, but it's that boring shit that really matters. And then handling your like glaring, like for lack of a better word, like fault in your health, right? So if it's got like, I mean, I'll just be like, you know, a little case study here. Like I went off the birth control pill last September, did about six months of prep work to do that. And then I just got my period back this July 
but it was after six weeks into a gut protocol. Yep. Yeah. That's powerful. Like yeah. that all goes together. You know, I didn't, I was one of those people that just nothing happened when I went off the pill, Yeah. which I mean, maybe that's, I, I would rather have that personally, I think than something blowing up. And I think that's where the prep work comes in. Um, also, I just was shut down for years and years and years. So yeah, <laughs> that's another story. Yeah. But again, it, it really, it does matter. I think if yeah. you've been on it for a long time. Yeah, for sure. So I think the moral of, of the today's podcast guys is one, I think when it comes to affording a coach, you can't afford a coach. Um, I think that you are worth affording a coach because yeah. you will save yourself weeks, months, years of heartache, understanding that if you come off birth control, I did this, we said this in other episodes, but if, and when you come off birth control, we, nobody can put a timeline on when that period returns. Um, we hoped that it returns you know, quickly. We hope that it returns within three months, but like with Sarah and a lot of my clients, that's what's called, you know, hypothalamic amenorrhea, you know, or po you know, even post post birth control amenorrhea. Um, so it is quite possible depending on you, depending on your current life, your past life, that be prepared to buckle in that things may not show up within the first three months or the first year. It can take a lot of work. And I know that on Instagram, we all post highlight reels of, oh, so-and-so got our period back. Understand that we don't, not everybody knows all the details on that person. You are you, and that's all that matters. So just work with a coach, slow and steady wins the race, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I will tell you that it's a lot more expensive to fix a problem. Yeah. Let's talk about Botox. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot more expensive to go in when you have a ton of lines and fill it out, right? It's a lot more expensive to, to go in when you are now having gut dysfunction, estrogen dominance issues, serious hormonal issues, skin issues, your red light therapy, prescription, Accutane, which sets your gut back even more, which is this vicious cycle that we'll see sometimes. It's going to cost you twice as much as working with a coach. And that's not a plug for us. Like, no, it's not like, it's just part of it. You know, it's like, and you can save money by doing these basic boring things. Yes. <laughs> with you the, the things that have the biggest impact y'all are not the new ethics are not yeah. the jumpstart are not yeah. the like, and, and I love new ethics products and you know, like hashtag yeah. we had a code, like whatever. But like, what I'm saying is like the lifestyle conquers all. Yeah. Supplement support. I, I, yeah. Supplement support. But the other thing is, is if you just take some supplements and you're like, okay, great. Let me give myself as an example here. I didn't address my lifestyle and I, I got rid of my SIBO. We were all good to go. Gut was fucking fire. And I went back to rushing, eating meals in between calls, walking around my house while I was eating, going longer hours, doing client calls and all this kind of stuff without eating, skipping some of my meat, like stuff, all this issues, not getting on top of my, like just being busy, being busy, going this. Okay. I like coffee. Let's drink some more, you know, like, let's <laughs> go. like all the things, which look for me, coffee, it's not really about the, cause I like to drink decaf. Honestly, it's about the stomach acid issue that it lowers my stomach acid so much, you know, like all these different things. And it's like, sure enough, here we are, we're back in a SIBO protocol, spending hundreds of dollars spending hundreds of dollars on supplements again, because SIBO is fucking expensive. You can't, and I'm on antibiotics um, this time. Like you, and I didn't fix my uh, lifestyle issues, right? Like I didn't stop and chew my food. I wasn't stopping and sitting down with it. I was doing the same fucking shit. And if you don't address your lifestyle issues and you are not sleeping, you're not regulating blood sugar, you're not managing stress, drinking water, like getting sunlight, don't expect yourself to see any difference in your life. Agreed. Yep. Yep. That was a banger episode, kids. Banger. I think that was a good one. Well, if you guys enjoyed this, be sure to um, share it. Make sure you're subscribed. If you're on Apple, give us a review. Appreciate yeah. those five stars. Yes. Yay. Okay, kids. Okay, bye guys. Bye.